Romeo number five. I just wasn't sure where my life was going or what it was going to be. Started thinking about the Marines. I didn't feel clever enough to follow the pilot route or the RAF. I joined the reserves, the Royal Marine Reserves, and initially I thought I'd just try and see how far I can go. I just found that I thrived. I thrived in that environment. It's that togetherness that you just think something special is going to come along and you just keep going, keep going. And up until this point, there was nothing worthy or substantial that I'd done in my life. I just went for it. A year and a half later, I passed out. I had three years. I went to the jungle, went to the States to work with the US Marines, became a boat driver. I was just loving life. Tennis was a strange one for me when, when it first started off. Most of my sports up until this point are just circuit training, hand cycling. Tennis is quite technical. I don't know what moment it was, but there was a bug for it. And I think because I wasn't that good, the need to learn about it more and try and be the best I can be. I definitely felt I had purpose and meaning. I just loved it in the end. I had the opportunity to sign up for four years. So I signed something called a full-time FTRS, full-time reserve service. And as I signed my contract a week later, and yeah, that's when I had me in the accident, and that's when things fell apart. It's me and our Pete, and my brother, we were meant to be kite surfing out in Anglesey. The weather being the way it was, the, the kite surfing wasn't going to happen. He wanted to buy a motorbike at the time. So we went along to the bike shop and we're looking at the biggest, fastest, most ridiculous bike you've ever seen. So we took it out. It was, it was my chance to have a go. And we turned this corner and the cars are parked up for about two miles long. We're just waiting in this traffic. Pete gives me a little nudge with his knees as if to say, go on, you'll be all right. We, we started to get to the front of that traffic and just as we got to the front, the guy front, he turns off the traffic and it was impatient and we didn't have any time to react. I just went straight in. Pete flew over the bonnet. The bike came up and I just went straight into the driver's side. And that great big beast, that menace of a bike came up and that broke my back in two. And I, I couldn't feel anything. And I was just lying on the floor. I was dazed, I was confused, I didn't know what was going on. And I just couldn't feel anything. It's just like reaching down, couldn't feel my legs. I could remember everything. I, I was in no pain, no pain. I was just looking up and there's cars and sirens and horns going on. Everyone was in hysterics, but I was just, just numb. And I just, after a while, I just blanked out. And then the next memory is waking up in the spinal unit. It's just a very surreal, out-of-body experience. It's as if you're looking down at yourself and you're like, this isn't happening. At that moment in time, your whole world is falling in on you and there's nothing you can do. My mum and dad are at the end of bed. My dad's crying. And I've, I've never saw him cry. Yeah, and I, I, I couldn't take it. So I, I just pressed that morphine and I drifted off because I just wanted to avoid um, the, the situation and I, I wanted to avoid what's happening. And then at some point, I just kept on pressing that morphine and it ran out. And I think. That's when I realised, like, I was 22 years old. I could no longer go back to the Marines and I think I was going to spend the rest of life in a chair. It's too much to comprehend. And then at some point, you've got to get in that chair. They lifted me up and they transferred me into this chair and I was with my mum. 
And obviously the next stage after that is to open the curtains. I just couldn't do it. And the doctor comes in and he goes, uh, Mr. Kroll, I said, yeah, I'm going to need you to dig deep. I am really cried properly up until this point. And I just burst out crying. And I just, I just couldn't stop. My mind's going into overdrive and I just, I'm thinking, am I going to get back to my sports? Am I going to be okay? Can I, can I marry Jane? It took over a year of bed rest and this whole process just mentally, it just destroys me. The training in the Marines certainly put me in good stead. I just think, right, I don't want people around me just thinking that I'm useless. You learn to put your clothes on, to look after yourself. Slowly but surely, my mindset started to think the right way. Stage one was just getting home to Jane, and then stage two was getting back into a bit of tennis. <laughs> tennis came about by a guy called Vince. I was lying there in my bed in Southport, and he comes in. He says, you've got it, you've got to come and play tennis with me. I was like, right, okay. He was just a guy that loved tennis, loved it so much that he was trying to get other people involved. <laughs> get into tennis and I'm enjoying it. It's like, right, should we go to Belfast and play a tournament? I was like, yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds good. And at this time, I'm still in hospital. I think I saw the other side of tennis, which was people living life, having a laugh, enjoying it. And then Ben said to me, he said, you're never going to be Paralympics or anything like that. You, you've got a bad disability for, for what you want to do. And it, it came clear that I was never going to reach those dizzy heights, but that journey to try and be the best version of me on court, that's when the Invictus Games came about. That just, just really gave me that, that focus to go for. And then 2016, the Orlando Games came about and they said wheelchair tennis was in it. And I just thought, hey, you know, this is, this is my time to shine. This is my sport. Once I got selected, it just felt like an amazing weight off my shoulder. And it just felt, I just felt so good. I didn't know what I was embarking on, but I knew it was going to be something special. It felt like being back in the Marines, back in training. It was at that moment that I thought, this is where I belong. And I was just so happy to be part of this team. We got to the games and then we nearly stacked it. We nearly got knocked out first round, but uh, we made it. That was my time to try and represent not only the Marines family, and represent myself and that was my time to try and do it to the best of my ability so I, I feel that was my time to serve. You're on the podium and you've got the flag and Andy's there and I'm there and he wipes up there and everyone's cheering and you've got the medal you just like get in. Boss. I felt like really accomplished. I've achieved something really good in my life. I wouldn't have been there if I never had this accident. There was still a need still inside me to keep competing. And so they, they give me the opportunity to go back and do it again. So yeah, two golds. You have your accident. I just think You've reached the pinnacle of your sport. It doesn't matter what happens after that. You just, you've done it. My Invictus Games journey as such kind of ended after Toronto, but I still love the sport. And I had this idea that I wanna, I wanna try and give back to the sport. So I reached out to the Invictus Foundation and said, right, I've got this idea to a tennis tournament to get veterans who either used to play or didn't realise they could play, get them in a chair, 
intro day and then we'll try and get them to some some type of tournament they liked the idea they said right you go and do your intro days liaise with the lta so we turned it into the battle of the brits well done this is the invictus first intro tennis day one of four well done on getting here i still feel there is a need for, for guys to play tennis and to have some type of competition what i can say if you do get the bug for it keep playing and keep enjoying it i, I honestly thought it was me going around the country playing a little bit of tennis showcasing my sport to everyone saying listen i really enjoy this do you like it what i underestimated uh, was uh, meeting and meeting these other people and listening to their stories just not realizing that there was a need for it so wendy you're over here with me don't touch the tires just these push rims okay so one of my overriding memories was meeting wendy in glasgow and at the time the, the olympics was on so i thought right let's let's have a chat and i said oh have you enjoyed the olympics I said, no, I can't watch sport. She was really reluctant to come through the door and play tennis. She said, I didn't really think it was for her. I damaged my ankle in the Navy. I've not been able to do sports since I got injured. So it's been decades. Um, and it's been great to do some sport again. I know without the wheelchair, I wouldn't be able to do anything. So it's just good to be able to get to it. By the end of that training session, we were playing doubles, we were having a laugh, we were having rallies. I just thought, how far, how far has that person come? And it's just like, wow, you know, some specials going on here. Harry, nice to meet you. Nice to see you. This is our only southern tennis session. We're in South Oxford and we had 11 takers for today, which was amazing. Well done, everyone, uh, for getting here today. Two people will go forward to the competition and we'll all develop together and have a good day. You can lean into the corner. That's it. Right the way around this one. I'm genuinely astounded at how, how quick they come on sitting in a chair for the first time to pushing forwards and then full-blown rallies points it's, it's miraculous the, the change in them physically and, and you know socially yeah. oh. we are at loughborough university which is session number three of four keep trying to play deep just play deep let them make the mistakes i hope to get a little bit of invicta spirit to see their improvements and see how much they did enjoy the day. It was phenomenal. Yeah, it was great. Basically, you boys are selected. Well, well done. We are at Wirral Bidston Tennis Centre, and this is number four of the Invictus Endeavour intro days, and this is my home turf. Well done, everyone, for getting here today. Let's see how we get on. You know, three or four hours' time, we'll be playing matches, and it'll be beautiful. Use those arms one at a time. Okay, you ready? Off we go. Whether they go on and play tennis or not, you know, I hope they become inspired. And then if they get to the games one day and I'm sitting there watching them, it'll just be, it'll just be mega. It's nice to see you all. We've got 10 players, Team Invictus and Team Endeavour. And during this weekend, we were all compete, we'll train. It's all about you guys. It's about growing the grassroots of tennis and for you guys to shine. Well done. Okay, so that was a phenomenal effort by everyone. Uh, and I'm, I'm inspired to see how we all came together. You came with a great spirit and what you've shown today on court has been a phenomenal achievement. I just want to congratulate Team Endeavour. I think regardless of what happens, there's only really one winner here anyway. I don't think anybody can win more than Alex right now for what he's managed to, to organise and set up for everybody. So going forward, I, I still want to inspire other veterans to, to get up, choose life, choose sport, feel, I feel I've started something really good. Three, two, one.
Jane was, she was always there for me. Having kids, it took us a while to get there. Our little bundle of joy, little Xander, he came along like, we were just so, so happy that we could have kids. Uh, should we start short? Yeah. Okay, you go round the other side of the net and we'll, we'll do a little bit. Yeah, that's it. Go oh, good boy. He's just a lovely little member of society and he's just the best thing ever. Are we going to be doubles partners one day? Yeah. Are we going to win? Yeah. Are we the greatest? Yeah. Yeah, well done. Give us a kiss. Mm, go and see your friends. The flying came about. You know, me and our Pete were trying to rehab together, not just physically, but psychologically and, and emotionally. And we said, hey, listen, there's someone called Flying Scholarships for the Disabled. And they, they gave me a scholarship to be given this opportunity to become a pilot. Just felt so happy and overjoyed. For that moment, up in the air, you're away from your disability and you just go with it. If I look to that 22 year old lad just lying in bed, not knowing what the future's going to be, if I knew there and then that this is my future and this is what it's going to be, I'd say, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy with that. Sport is the greatest and the most saddest thing you'll ever participate in. Sport has given me that purpose, particularly tennis has been my saviour. It's just given me what I need. He knows I'm in a wheelchair. He says, it really doesn't matter. His dad plays tennis, flies planes. It's just a bit of a legend. <laughs> but he doesn't know that yet. Even though no, this can't go really fast. Come on then, you. Yeah, I'll give, give us that.